Hey there. What can I do you for? Let me have that thing. Give me a few minutes, and I'll have the elevator up and running. As soon as I get it online, we'll get out of here. What can I do you for? Thanks. I will stop. You don't look... Back so soon? to see you in one piece. Yes. Not bad, kid. Not bad. Oh! Again, I'm not sure how to thank you. I'm going to head back to Ranger Compound to see if Riley's back yet. Look me up anytime you're in the neighborhood. If I can ever be of medical assistance or you need some supplies or repairs, let me or Donovan know. Hey, be more careful.
Beware, I shall destroy you with the fire of this small sun before me. Beware, worm! What's the further? Make him shut up, please. Just make him shut up. He's... he's been up there for days. He's got all of those mines wired to a trigger. He won't let anyone in or out of the alley. If I try to leave, he'll set them off. But I can't stay here any longer. No. No way. He'll set the bomb... Oh. Um, well, you look like someone who's pretty smart. So if you say so... Okay. Give me a status report. You look like you've been through hell. I bet it was. Frankly, I'm amazed you made it. Can you give me a full debriefing on what happened out there with my man? Very impressed at your skill. I don't think I've come across someone quite like you in the ruins. I suppose I owe you a debt, and I intend to pay it in kind. I'm sure you're more interested in your reward than listening to me talk, so let me get right to it. Losing a bit of the Merc Edge, eh? Don't get soft on me now. Well, I've said it once, but I'll say it again. You have my thanks. I'd be pretty lost without my guys. So, for your reward, what'll it be? The Ranger battle armor, or one of Brick's miniguns? The armor it is. Wear it with pride, kid. We do. Consider this place your home away from home. If you're ever in the neighborhood again, you're more than welcome to take shelter here. I guess that does it. See you around, kid. Hope you find...
Somebody raped her? Need something smooth skin. What makes you think we've got something to say? Jesus Christ! Don't, don't sneak up on me like that. Last fella, last fella to do that damn near lost my arm. You're new here, yeah. 
You must be, since you're actually talking to... Talking to me. I'm Patchwork. They're just patches, if you like that. I'm... Shit. I forget. Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I guess. No. Yeah. I'll be okay. I just... I just need to try not to lose any more of my parts this time. And Doc Barrows says that he's... He's getting tired of putting them back on. So, you know, if you see any, just bring them back. You sure? Some... Some people make me hurt myself. Because uh, it makes them laugh. Why you want to head on over to the Ninth Circle and talk to Mr. Azrakal? He... he... Uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the generators. I don't know where they are. You'll have to ask Winthrop. What can you tell me about? What? Wait, what? Morning. Sorry, I'm on a break. I'll be back in a bit if you need. Morning, hon. What will it be? To tell you the truth, hon, I don't really know much about it. All I know is that it used to be some sort of exhibit. Something about hell or the afterlife or something. Tulip knows that sort of stuff. Not like anyone around here ever buys anything from that shop of hers. What is it? Oh. Oh my, someone new. I'm, I'm so sorry. You must think I'm terribly rude. Welcome. Welcome to Carol's place. I'm Carol. It's not much I know, but it's mine. So if you need anything, just let me know. Greta will get you any food you want, and I handle the rooms. It's so good to have someone new here, even if it is an ugly old smooth skin. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't make that face. You'll love it here. Gob? Yes, of course. He's my son. Well, not really. Not like you would think of a son. We ghouls don't really work like that. But I love him like he's my own. Do you know him? Have you seen him? Is he all right? Oh, that's wonderful news. I'm so glad. If you see him, please tell him that his mother misses him and loves him and that I hope he's happy. But he shouldn't come visit. It's too dangerous. No, no, he should stay put where he is. That's right, her and I have been together for, oh, about 60 years now. But things haven't really been the same since Gob left. 
He was like a son to me. I think Greta was always a little jealous of him. Oh, that's such a long story. You couldn't possibly want to hear about that. Well, okay. But it's nothing special. I was born in 2051, so yes, that makes me a pre-war ghoul. I do. I was in a shelter with my father when the bombs hit. In D.C., we had the luxury of getting a warning after the West Coast was... gone. I was just a little girl then. We couldn't afford a space in one of the vaults. I remember filing down into that shelter, my father rushing me in. He stopped to help this one family. And I looked up and called his name. There was a flash of light brighter than anything you can imagine. I woke up a few hours later. The first thing I did was run up to where my father had been. He... he was gone. But the strangest thing... There was his shadow, burned into the wall, so crisp and clear, like he was standing next to me. The heat had burned it into the concrete. The city was on fire for weeks, maybe months, I don't know. I hid down here in the museum. It was the closest building to the shelter I was in. But I could hear what was happening above. People howling like animals, chaos, looting, killing. It's like every foul thing inside of them came out. It was a nightmare. I... I don't want to talk about it. I don't know how it happens. Dr. Burroughs says it was radiation. All I know is that people kept showing up here in the museum. After things calmed down above ground, we tried to live down here as best we could. After a while, things got strange. My skin started to get dry and flake off. Everyone's did. It took a while. Months, maybe a year. But sooner or later, everyone ended up like this. Some of them went crazy. Some of us just accepted it. After a while, other ghouls would find their way in here, and Underworld just sort of grew. No one bothered us down here. We were happy enough to leave them alone. And once my Greta showed up, it was a good enough life for me. You tell the same story for 200 years, you'll feel pretty uninteresting, too. I've been here since we founded the town. Before that, well, life out in the wastes wasn't very pleasant for us. But so long as we stay down here, we can live our lives as people, not monsters. I think things are better this way for everyone. Do you want to hear a story about the Wastes? Oh, why, hello there. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Quinn. You too, stranger. I know a lot of people around here don't take kindly to humans wandering around, but I've met a lot of your people in my travels. Yeah, just east of here. Some freed slaves just occupied it. We trade with them occasionally. Later. Don't get to you. <sighs> well now, looky here. We got us a smooth skin that I ain't ever seen before. I'm Azrakal, and this... This is the Ninth Circle. Folks got problems, and I got liquor to sell them. 
Well, liquor and a few other pick-me-ups, huh? You need anything, uh, you just let me know. That's Sharon. Let's just say, well, he's a loyal employee. Don't mess with me, and he won't mess with you. I hold his contract, which makes me his employer. He will do what I ask, when I ask, without question. You see, Sharon grew up around a very interesting group of individuals. They, well, I guess you could say that they brainwashed him. He is absolutely loyal to whomever holds his contract. Unfailing, unflinching, until the day that employment ends. Don't get me wrong. I have no doubt that he holds no end of animosity towards me. But so long as he is my employee, he is as gentle as a teddy bear. Very well. Yeah, just east of here. Some freed slaves just occupied it. We trade with them occasionally. Why, whatever do you mean? I'm a simple barkeep. Nothing more. The Enclave is on the scene and setting up shop. Children, I don't care if you've ignored every other word. An educated consumer. My favorite kind. Yes, yes, I think I can help you. Simply step over here, my friend, and I'll show you my stock of more potent goods. Colonel Augustus Autumn are not here to help you. Wake up, children. As you wish, my friend. have a giant truck full of Brahmin, and they've been spoon feeding you the bullshit. These guys. It's the only place in the capital wasteland where my people can escape the misery of the world above. And that, that misery, friends, well, it makes a man like me very happy children. and very, this very wealthy. There are no worries that can't be left behind with the help of a little alcohol. We all know the dangers of radiation. No, go talk to Azrakal. Don't make me say it again. Be smart. Give yourself a nice boost of Radex first. Remember, only you can prevent human flesh fire. Now, some music. <laughs> Get yourself another drink. You look entirely too sober. Cool, human, I don't care. The caps all spend the same. Oh, would you now? He's a highly valuable asset to me and to the Ninth Circle. What did you have in mind? I suppose we could do that, uh, although you might not like the deal that I have to offer. You see, I don't like competition. Not at all. It goes against every principle that I have as a businessman. So the fact that there is another source for booze in town troubles me. Greta, the waitress over at Carol's, I want you to kill her. I don't care how. Just make it quiet. Do it, and you can have Sharon's contract.
Loyal employee that he is, Sharon would do it without question if I asked him to. However, the entire town would come down on me for it. Greta is quite popular around here. If Sharon is the one who kills her, everyone will know that it was me who ordered Greta's death. I need Sharon clearly visible and in public when Greta dies, so that I can fairly claim ignorance of the situation. No stomach for hard work, eh? Come back, Kenny. What are you looking at? You'd think you'd never seen a ghoul up close before. Is that so? Even if I call you a milk-sucking, mutant-loving, water-stealing son of a whore? a human that knows this place. Too many of you think we're all just zombies. They don't know or don't care that we're just as human as they are inside. We bleed, we hurt, we regret. And you know what really pisses me off? They think the only way to kill us is to shoot us in the head, like in the old zombie stories, and that'll put us out of our misery. Hey, I know. Maybe you could help me even the score. Not everyone is as sympathetic to ghouls as you are. In fact, some humans are downright bigots. They treat us like zombies, calling us brain eaters and shufflers. Well, I'm gonna make them pay. Uh, before I get into the details, you don't have anything against killing, do you? Or oh, the right money, huh? I've got this list of people. Ghoul bigots. Real scum. I've only got four guys left on the list. Started with Eleven. All of them hate ghouls and treat us like we're zombies. They all deserve to die, but it has to be done with a headshot. Just like the old stories where zombies can only be killed that way. I'll give you a hundred caps for each of them. If they die some other way, I'm only paying twenty-five, though. Excellent. Take this sniper rifle. You'll need it. Here's a list of the guys and their last known locations. Word will get around if Tenpenny's killed, but I'll need proof for the others. Bring me back something personal from each of them as proof. Like a key, a ring or something. 